Oh, well, of course, with it being Heritage Month, we are here to celebrate, and we've got a special lady in the building. We'll see you just now. Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. It's another edition of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ting, ting, ting! <laughs> yes, I love it. A favorite part of the show, and it's Heritage Month, and we have a very special addition to the Culinary Hotline this morning. We've got three special guests that are going to be joining us, and they're going to be sharing some of their very, very special heritage recipes with us. Now, joining in on the discussion this morning, first up, we want you to come through with the voice notes and uh, use our WhatsApp line. That's 063-408-8863. And uh, our first question for the day, like many African dishes, the Isit Klasa staple foods include fresh maize, dried, crushed, coarse grains, wild edible greens, various breads and meat. The authentic experience when it comes to food, and I absolutely love it. Now, we have our first guest in the building, cookbook author and compiler of the Rainbow Nation Cookery Guide. Book. It's Pumla Brook Tomai in the building. She shares a recipe. It's much loved by not only the Isikosa culture, but all of us here in South Africa. Pumla, it's so good to have you in the kitchen. How are you doing? My favorite man. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> let me correct. Made. My okay. favorite <laughs> man. <laughs> Very well done. Well played, like, Pumla. You are radiating with your colors, and I think it matches your personality perfectly. And everything about your culture, I think we absolutely love. And are inviting to the kitchen because we are here for it. Thank you. What have you got for us today, though? What are you preparing? What can we look forward to? So, not a lot of people might know. This is actually the former uh, late Nelson Mandela's favorite food as well. Oh, wow. OK, so we're stepping it up. This is like... Always. Oh, wow. OK, I yeah. love this. So we've got samp and beans, very clean flavors. Mm -hmm. We're not overpowering um, the food, you know, with a lot of spices and stuff, but you can build. So we're taking people back to okay. where we come from because we're so proud of our past. I love that. You back know, to our roots. So we ease our roots. Yes. So we don't want people to forget how the dishes started. I love that. And it's, if it's fit for someone like Nelson Mandela, mm. our king, then come Definitely. on, it's fit for everybody in Uzanti. So take us to this beautiful recipe. I love the authenticness. I love the rawness about it. How are we doing this? I was having a conversation with my Uber driver this morning. Okay. So I asked him about this dish. Yeah. You know, so he's from Zimbabwe. So he said he likes it, he loves it, but he doesn't know how to cook it. Ah. So I told him, okay, you're going to have to tune go to in. the Express website. Now. No, <laughs> go to the website. Oh, because yes. Because he's on the road right okay, now. Of so course. he couldn't. There's a ratio to these things. Okay. okay. So the ratio is one to one. How easy is that? One part Sam to one, one part One part Sam nice. to one part beans. You mix the two. I can see that these beans and the samp have soaked. Yes, so what I've done is, it's easy, you know, to prep ahead. Mm -hmm. So you can just mix the two, um, rinse it off, of course, soak it in... How long do we soak? Soak it overnight. So you have to, you have to like, intentionally know, tomorrow we're doing samp and beans, because you yes. can't wake up in the morning and be like... You can, however, it's going to take you long to cook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while you're busy mixing it together, yeah. what if... I decide in the next two hours, I want samp and beans. Can I have it? Yes, you can. It cooks about two hours. Okay, oh, so wow. that's actually spot on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> spot on, it's like that. Okay. You One thing I also love can. about this is that it's, it's, it's a healthy food, right? I mean, we're talking about beans, we're talking about natural yeah. ingredients. This is like the food of warriors as well. I mean, you can take it back to it the culture. It fills you up. It, it fills yeah, you up. Yeah, it's got a roughage. Oh, it's yeah. fiber, yeah, it's roughage. Got a, yeah, it's got, got a, some yeah, good yeah, carbs, so it's going to sustain it. you throughout the day. Yes. So, I mean, even kids can capitalize on this. And I mean, of course. a little bit goes such a long way when it comes to something. And it's very versatile as well. Yeah. Yeah, because you can make it, for example, you know, as um, it's, you can make it more drier, mm. then it's more heavier, more filling. But maybe for kids, you can make it, you can um, feather the cooking time, maybe two, three hours. Okay. Make it very soft, add veggies, make it into a soup. Oh, that's a good smart. idea. We could make I like that. Wait until you see what we're going to make tomorrow. I'm not telling. I'm not going to tell oh. you. Oh, <laughs> the teas. <laughs> With <With Sam. laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, All right. So just Remember, the soaking water, mm -hmm. uh, if you did soak it overnight, discard it. All right, don't yeah. you put it in the garden. <laughs> For the example, plants. Okay. that's a great one. And um, then give it another rinse. Make sure the rinsing uh, time, you rinse it until it runs clear. You don't gotcha. see any cloudiness. Gotcha. Then you know you're done. So, samp and beans in 
Water goes in next? Yes, okay. water goes in. So for example, to your one cup, let's say you did one cup of sand, one cup of beans, you'll do like about a litre of water. Okay. Yeah. And then the next ingredient is a stock cube and stock white pepper. Cube, that's your flavouring, a bit of uh, stock and salt mm. and white pepper. We're taking it to white pepper. I we're know gonna, you. So we're going to talk more about white, white pepper, pepper. Like, in a bit. <laughs> uh, but then okay. it goes for two hours and it looks like this. Then Do it's it. going to look mm. like that. Mm. Fumla, <laughs> love thank that. you so much for sharing your tradition, sharing your culture and sharing your love with us here in the kitchen. I can feel it and I know it's always being felt in your meals and I'm so appreciative of it. Of course, the cookbook is out so in. everybody needs to get on that and if you want to yes. find the recipe, then head over to expressoshow.com and you want to dive into any more of this culture, then of course, don't forget, the Rainbow Nation Cookery Guide is here to serve you. If you've got any questions for later on, then come through on our WhatsApp line because we are here to serve. Well done, Eddie. Thank Loved you. It. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. Your feel-good breakfast show, and of course, it's round two of the Culinary Hotline. Bling! Ting, ting, ting! <laughs> of course, we talk about all things when it comes to Heritage Day, celebrating Heritage Month. We've got a beautiful book that is available, the Rainbow Nation Cookery Guide, which has got all the magic inside of it. But we are heading over to the Shitsonga tribe, located in Limpopo, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and other parts of South Africa, which are known for their farming and agricultural skills. Now, Tsonga cuisine is described as the following, and I love it, very tasty nutritious and clean flavored and I'm here for it now here to tell us more is our second guest Shiluva Charles Ngobeni otherwise known as Chef La Boom Boom yeah, 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 yeah. yes. <laughs> now listen up ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions for Chef Clem or Chef La Bumba on our food panel please join in on the discussion and send us your voice notes to 063 408 and of course if you want to get your hands on the recipe right now then head over to expressoshow.com Chef La Bumbu, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's good to be back. It's good to have you, man. I yeah. missed you. I think, eh? I think I might just relocate to Cape Town. Oh, yeah, please, 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 because that means you're going to be feeding beautiful bellies. <laughs> you're going to be spreading the love of your culture as well, and we are all here for it. I mean, look at Chef Clem. Look how excited I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Anytime I get to see ingredients that I don't cook yeah. that often, yeah, yeah. I get so excited. And yeah. you've got... I mean, this what is the most is simplest even? thing ever. Okra? This is, what this do you is mean? okra. Yeah? But okra. In, in my language, we call it gushe. Gushe? Yeah, a gushe. I like the that. The most gushe. simplest thing ever. Okay. Right. Uh, I, to be honest, I've only cooked it like twice. I'm really excited to see how we're going to take our beautiful okra and end up with this dish. It looks so delicious. Mm -hmm. So is. good. Look, so listen, good. I have a confession to make. Okay. Growing up, I never used to like vegetables <laughs> at all. So they had to like force me and stuff. I thought it wasn't nice. I mean, as young kids, you're thinking, ah, greenies, come on. It's like a vegetable, I need yeah. some meat. Okay, <laughs> can I be yeah. honest with you? And we, we love our grandparents, we love all the aunties out there, but they have a, like a history of like, Cooking the green out of things. Yeah. They will kick the, cook the life out of things that is like grey. And I feel that's why it also got like exactly. our generation. Now, exactly. we, we keep things a little more crisp, a little more colour. How did we end up from the beautiful okra there to where we are right here? I mean, this is what you do. It's simple. Uh, I like to do it like this. Can you see how it is? So you just chop it nicely. And we're trying to keep the... So okra's got a natural like... Yeah. Sliminess exactly. to it. Let's, let's, let's just call Super it that. Super slimy. We're trying to keep that in there because that adds texture to the dish, right? Yeah, that's true. And have you boiled this? Yes, yes. You you must boil it first. That's why it, it became like this. I mean, look. Now I'm just you. like absolutely blown away. I'm like a kid trying to discover what this is. <laughs> Opening it up. I mean, look how this thing looks. It's insane. Listen, I don't even know I've, what that I've is. Never the seen... seeds. Yeah, I've never seen something like this. I've just peeled open the skin. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of crunchy. The inside has a bit of like a slimy, wet texture to it, yeah. so it is moist. I'm assuming these are the seeds, which I would imagine carries all the power and the nutrients. At the same time, this is fascinating. It's almost like if someone took, let's say... Uh, I'm waiting it, for this, like yes. A, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like a small uh, corn. Okay, uh, okay. Yes, yeah. Right, and then wrapped it around like a celery or something. <laughs> This is like a superfood. Yeah, it this looks is like pretty that, cool. Uh, that's right. Fascinating that's stuff. Right. I can't wait to see how this is. Anyway, let me not distract you any further. Uh, <laughs> what's the next steps here? Yeah, so after you've chopped it right, you must put it in the pot. No oil? Right? Oil? No, nothing like that. Nothing? Water. That's how healthy it is. Okay. It's, it's got too much nu nutrition. Okay. Too much. Too much. Too Yo, much. Nice. I think that's why my grandmother was busy forcing me to eat this. <laughs> and I didn't want to. So after that, you just put it in the pot. Right? Add a little bit of water, not too much water, mm -hmm. right? It must just cover just a little bit. 
right? And then, if it's like this already, make sure that you peel your tomato. Can you peel this for me? At your service, yeah, sir. Yeah, we like it peeled in, 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 in the Hitsonga culture, right? Get the, the tomato skins, just get them off. And yes. I see you blanch the tomato first, just help the skins come off. I like that. Yes. That's but check cool. at this, by the way. Look how easy this is. I was like figuring out, how am I going to do this, actually? Watch this. <laughs> so simple. Just a little peel. Voila. Yeah. Easy does it. Absolutely. <laughs> Woo! Absolutely you magic go. stuff. Oh, All right. Sorry. So that's fully peeled over there. Yeah. Once you sort it out. You then you chop it. it back. Then you chop the tomato. So I see we've got some pop over here. How else would they serve this? Oh, dish? yeah. Sorry, but can you chop this for me? Sure, so, let's, let's swap, swap, swap. swap. All right. <laughs> and I have some water as well. Grab some of that. So we can ask Chen Sachi in the kitchen, man. I like this. This is how it should be, yeah. <laughs> so with the fermented pop, right? Mm hmm So as you can see there, you leave it, you close it in a bucket. We usually use a bucket, like a normal bucket. You, you, you mix up your um, water, like 250 mils of water, 250 grams yeah. of maize milk. Depends on how big your family is. Right? <laughs> you leave it for three days, you close it up. Three days? Three, three days. days. Wait, it doesn't, start, days. doesn't it start fermenting at that stage? <laughs> People getting a bit, like, happy. Yeah. Three okay, days, I'm okay. something about uh, some of the best foods. It takes time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we were speaking about this earlier when we were talking about the Isikmosa culture as well, but I mean, for both aspects, time is so important in these meals, and I think that's what you're getting at the end of the day. That's true. It's that care, it's that thought, and that's compassion that goes into it, and that's what makes this like so much more special to me, and I think yeah. that's where the authenticity comes in. Yeah, you know, it's, it's gone of the day, we're living in this world of like, now, 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 and I love exactly. how this brings us back to this time of like, be patient, yeah. appreciate, be present in the moments. True. And these recipes almost force you to do that if, you don't, if you're actually paying attention. That's and that's true. what I'm absolutely loving about this. One thing I'm picking up, which is, I'm here for it. I'm here for it indeed. Me too, I love it. Yep. So during the three, hour, the three hours, the, during the three, <laughs> three days, days, and on the three third days, day, yeah. is it going to mature in flavor? What, do we, what happens yeah, with yeah, this Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, how, how do you, it's sour. Like, it's, it does it's, kind of ferment. Yeah. It's I fermented. love that. That's amazing. Exactly. Okay. So that's how you, you, you eat it with the gushe. So, and, oh, by the way, we call it Wuswa Bjadbini. Wuswa. What's that? With the pop, the way that's made? Yeah, the fermented pop. Wuswa Bjadbini. If you, like, <laughs> after how many bowls of the fermented pop, you're going to try and say that again? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But I love the flavor. You, you, you're taking simple ingredients, but you're using smart techniques to, like, get the most out of it. Yeah, yeah. And flavor. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it. I agree with you. If it takes time, it's where it's at. Oh, it's yeah. essential. I'm absolutely loving this, Chef Labumba. I can't thank you enough for sharing some of your culture, educating us, and of course, not forgetting all the love. And we are here for it. Of course, for you, Mzanzi, you want to find more of this recipe, you can find it on expressoshow.com, the culinary hotline. We'll be back. Don't forget, you can send all your queries, all your conundrums to a WhatsApp line. That's 0634088863. We'd love you to serve you. It's my feel good. Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. And we are continuing to celebrate Heritage Month. And, uh, of course, this is another edition, the final edition of the Culinary Hotline Blue. Ching, ching, ching! <laughs> now, listen to this. The word Buddha, of course, directly translated, means farmer's food. And although not all Afrikaans-speaking South Africans are farmers, the term is synonymous with Afrikaans cuisine that can also be described as country-style cuisine. Now, it is comfort food at best, and we've got a special gent in the building. Of course, Maybach is here to share a little about his heritage with a comforting tomato breedy, tomati breedy recipe. I can't wait for it. And of course, if you want to get your hands on the recipe, you can go to expressoshow.com. But let me say good morning to the man, the legend himself. Of course, how are you doing this morning? Good to see you, my it's friend. It's such an honor to have you here. And we are doing something that is so, so special to me. I grew up looking forward to this meal. My mom would make it on special occasions, especially when there was meat available. And oh, I love it so much. And I can't wait to unpack this and share this recipe because I think every South African should try this. Hey? We love it. We absolutely love it, especially for winter, mm. slow cooking. It's, it's, it's real food, man. It really is. Oh, yes. Really so is. please take us through how okay. we put all this magic together. How do we do this? We've, we've browned the meat very quickly. Okay. Uh, I normally cut it up before, but I'm going to cut it up for you now. Okay. We just cut it up into chunks, leave some on the bone. Yeah. We use short rib, half short rib, and half shin, um, which then, once the onions and the leeks have been browned, 
We put it together with, with the onions and the leeks. Okay. Um, and add our juices, add our tomatoes. I used canned tomatoes. Um, right, like nice and easy, nice and nice simple. And it's a meal that can stock. be prepared quite quickly, right? It's not like, I mean, we were looking at some of the previous meals, the three days to prepare some of them, two days. I mean, this is no, something no, you no, can braise no, no. up quite quickly, right? This is two hours cooking, well, basically three hours cooking nice. to meet this nice and soft. Nice. And I like the fact that you're including the bone and some of the good stuff in there. Because, because you've got that marrow stuff that's inside that. Yeah. yeah. To come out. Yes. You can't yes. cook without marrow. If I walk into the butcher shop and they've got marrow bones, I buy them. Nice. Yeah. They go into the deep freeze because, <laughs> guys, that's what puts the flavor in your dish. It really right. does every time. So bring on the flavor. Let's talk about what we, obviously, we chopped up the meat, right? And that's obviously going into the pan. I see Chef Clem, you're already on, uh, was that I'm, saute duty over there? What are you We've got some there? onions and celery in here. It's a little bit of salt just to help them sweat a bit in the pan. Okay. And then just back to the meat that you're using. So you said you've got shin here with us today. Shin and but I mean, I'm, I short know rib. That, and, and short rib. And oh, I like the fact for that... For the fat. Can you get your hold of the piece of short rib? Because, I mean, the, I like how there's nothing short about short rib. They are... <laughs> They're massive. Lot, massive. <laughs> but I mean, the fact that you can swap this out for like lamb or mutton, a little bit of tripe even in there. The, the foundation of a tomato brie sauce has lent itself to so many different dishes throughout different cultures. Yeah. And I absolutely love it. This is also a great one for a poiki, doing it in a poiki. Oh, yes, please. Be, of course, I wanted present, to ask you, we've, we've been asking everyone on the show this morning, obviously, with yes. regards to Heritage Month, uh, the question has been, you can't go without a Heritage meal without having something. Mm -hmm. What is that something for you when it comes to your style of cooking and your nostalgic memories even? I don't know. I think... A, a really good rib done slowly over the coals is my... Scarp rabiki is my best. Is that, is that the that, way to your heart? That, that's the way to my heart. <laughs> that's, that's the way to my heart. I Guys, this. I wanted to say something to you. Yeah. The book that we do, the Rainbow Nation Cookery Guide yes, that has yes. been put together, yeah. um, I had the most amazing time because it was my task to prepare the meals for the photographer, Brent Abrams, who was doing all the photography. Okay, okay. And I learned it. so much yeah. about the other cookery styles in this country, which I knew very little. I heard of ingredients, I had to source ingredients that I've never even heard about. Yeah. I'd never heard of Bambara nuts. Okay. And I've it's not heard of that either. Exactly. Get the book. It's all in there. And it's amazing the food and the, the variety of food that's yeah, available. I think, in this especially, country. Are you hitting the nail on the head there, especially when you're talking about our country, the amount of culture that we have. Yeah. And what that means is the amount of flavor options that we do have. And I think it would be almost a shame to just stick to our own culture and stick to our own cooking styles when you look at all the magic that we have within our nation. And I'm so grateful to have this book, the Rainbow uh, Nation Cookery book. I think it's something exceptional to share. Like you said, all these flavors and all the magic that we have within our country. And just to be educated and learn about it too, on it's, the money. It's, and if, if, if there's a secret to the way I was taught at home to cook tomato brady is no water. No if water. It, it's stock. Stock, yeah. Homemade stock, I use chicken stock. Um, and if you run out of fluids, you need more fluids, red wine or more chicken yeah. stock. Yum, yum, yeah. I love okay. it. This is obviously, this is the culinary conundrum and we've got some, so many questions, so many voice notes and we haven't even got through any. So I just wanted to play one while we can. Maybe we can assist Mzanzi with any questions they have. So let's see who's first up on the line. I think it's Val with a question. Let's see what she has to say. Good morning, Expresso Show. It's Val speaking. I please just want to know from Chef Clem, if possible, I... I'm always confused. I want to just know, do I fry fish from frozen or must I defrost it? I'd really like his help. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. I like this question. Oh, nice. I like this question. Frying fish, eh? Yeah, so yeah. When, you're, when you're frying fish, I mean, you're normally using your firm, white, dense fish, like your hake, um, your snook, your angelfish, um, king clip, all of those type of fish. What's nice about those fish is they don't take long to thaw. You can leave it out in the counter and within like um, half an hour even, you'll see the texture started to change. By an hour, you'd be really good to go. When you're frying fish, I'd say, yes, please do um, thaw your fish out. And depending if you're gonna do it like a flour coating on it or a batter type of, a beer batter type of coating on it, that's when you add a little extra salt to it to help that stickiness and the, that batter to stick to the fish itself. Okay. But water you don't want. Sometimes the water releases while it's cooking and it starts splattering in your pan or in the oil. You don't want that. However, if you're caught in a pickle and you only have frozen fish and you need to cook now, 
You can do like an oven baked fish with like beautiful sauces and veggies in there. And that you can kind of roast from frozen. So when it comes to frying, definitely thaw. But if you're going to pop it in the oven and bake it, roast it in a sense, frozen is okay. Beautiful. All right. Great advice there. Thank you so much, Chef Clement Val. Thank you so much for coming through with that question. How's our, oh, my favorite meal, the tomato breedy looking over there? Where are we at now? We have to get Popping the veggies in there. Absolutely. Veggies coming in. All right. I, I would normally have the, the carrots in and then do two hours at least. To soften them up. To yeah. soften them up yeah. and get the meat softened because I don't want my potatoes to disappear mm -hmm. into it. Okay, so it becomes like a, almost like a soup broth. <laughs> it in becomes sense. a mush. Yeah. And so the potatoes I would add in after the first two hours so that it's finished and it's ready and it's really good. When does your sugar go in? Because I know that's another important part of the tomato breedy. When I use tomato, I always, I was taught you always use sugar. So I would put that in now. Now, I would put that in now. That exactly? You guys have any, any ideas? Or just a, a uh, the, taste? the acidity is from the tomato ah, is just a bit too high, okay. and the sugar just it softens that, balances it out a bit. Okay, makes nice a big stuff. difference. Another conundrum solved out here in the kitchen, <laughs> gents. It's already looking so good. If I could only just tell you the smiles that right? I'm getting right now, mm. it's a waff of goodness. It's a waff <laughs> of homeness. It's a waff of like nostalgia that I just could not get enough of. And like I said, this is something that just reminds me of my childhood. It looks like, uh, have we prepared something in advance there? Is, is there one to maybe for we, me to try out there? We've already I got I one there for you to try. Oh, yes. Yes. Let me I go run right over someone... to that side if you don't mind because I can't resist this, this one. Oh, yes. I'm gonna steal this whole bowl because it looks absolutely delicious. And yellow rice, right? Delicious. It has to be yellow rice. Yellow rice in there too. And like you said, if now If you look I can in the see... book, I've got real begrafenis rice. I don't know if you know real begrafenis rice. rice. What is that? Yes. In, in, in days gone by when, when when, when my ancestors were traveling in ox wagons, they got together for funerals, weddings, and nachmal. Oh, okay. And those, okay. those were the special cooking days where they entertained, and they made really good yellow rice, but it's got a lot more. It's got honey in it, it's got butter in it, it's got all mm. kinds of things. So That's right. check the, the book, guys. Mm. It really is there. Uh, mm. Mm. Let me tell you, taking me back home, I'm feeling like mother's warmth and comfort is in this too, and I'm so here for it. I'm going to steal this entire bowl for you, Mzanzi. Head over to expressoshow.com for all this incredible heritage inspiration, all these recipes, and of course, you need to get your hand on this book. Edu educate yourself. Explore the beauty of South African's culture when it comes to food and flavor. And oh, boy, you are going to be absolutely surprised. Of course, thank you so much for joining thank us in you the kitchen. You're an absolute thank legend. You. It was a pleasure and an honor. And Chef Clem, as always, another culinary conundrum solved. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much.